It's only mid-December, and I bet most of you haven't even considered planning your New Year's resolutions yet. Who can think about self-improvement when there are so many distractions, like all that yummy holiday food and watching those cheesy romantic Christmas movies on the Hallmark Channel? Okay, but here's a resolution that's just as fun. Many of my clients want to read more, but then life gets in the way. They know that reading is important for their personal growth, but they never pick up a book. In today's video, you'll learn how to read more books in 2020, and I've got nine simple strategies to help you out. Let's go! Hey there, I'm Sage Grayson, a former book editor turned life coach. I help ambitious career women edit their habits, routines, and mindsets to balance their happiness at work and home. I'm a life editor, and so are you. Today, we're talking about how to make time to read in the new year. No excuses. I will not have you life editors get lazy and turn your brains into mush. Here are some simple strategies to make reading easy and enjoyable. Number one, redefine what a book is. This idea came from the book Finish by John Acuff, and I'll leave the link below this video. His goal was to read 100 books per year, but he was getting stuck because he thought he had to read those serious, thick books that you see on the bestseller lists. Instead, he broadened his definition of a book to include audiobooks, comics, and graphic novels. Reading is reading, so don't get hung up on choosing traditional books. You might also want to try magazines, poetry journals, or scripts for plays. Number two, divide and conquer your books with tabs. I describe my tab technique in another video and I will link it below. But basically, you break down your books just like you would any other project. First, grab your book and then place sticky notes at specific intervals to track your progress. If you wanna read one book per week, Take the total number of pages, divide by seven, and then place seven tabs, one for each day of the week, in your book. How do you mark your place in a book? Leave a comment below and let me know. Number three, delete distractions and focus on reading. How many of you come home from work and then immediately turn on the TV or start playing some music? If reading is important to you, then you gotta delete the distractions that keep you from it. Set a timer and then only focus on reading your next book. No watching TV, no folding laundry, no answering emails. Give your book the attention that it deserves and you'll get more out of it. Number four, borrow your books from the library. Everyone loves the feeling of a crisp new book in your hands, but not everyone has the cash to buy new books every week. So head over to your local library where you can get access to a wide variety of titles without having to pay anything. And libraries are the perfect place to get some quiet time to read if your home is too distracting. You'll also find books that are out of print or hard to find, plus genres and authors that you haven't tried before. Number five, track your progress in a visual way. A fun way to motivate yourself to read is to create a pretty book tracker. You could keep it simple and just do a running list in your notebook, or you could take pictures of the covers of all the books that you read and keep them in an album on your phone, or you could take your bullet journal or planner and draw little shapes of books and then color them in every time you read a new book. Tracking your progress will make you want to read more books, and it's wonderful to look back over the years and see what you've read. Number six, use waiting time to always be reading. Much of our days are spent engaged in waiting time, when we're waiting for the next thing to happen. This could be sitting in your doctor's office, or standing in line at the grocery store, or stuck in traffic. Keep a physical book or an audio book on your phone with you at all times. When you've got five minutes to wait, don't just stare off into space, read something. Those extra minutes really add up. Number seven, join a book club to stay accountable. This strategy works well for obligers, people who need external motivation to do something. The term obliger comes from the book The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin, and I'll leave the link below this video. Seriously, read this book. Create a social obligation for yourself by joining a book club, 
through your library, on meetup.com, or with your friends, family, and coworkers. You'll be more likely to read when you know you're going to be discussing the book with everyone at the next meeting. Number eight, share pictures of what you're reading on social media. You can connect with other readers on practically any social media platform. Share a picture of the book or books that you're reading every week and ask your followers to share what they're reading too. Be sure to use hashtags and search for other online book club groups. Your followers will be expecting your next update so you'll be more likely to continue. Number nine, have fun and give yourself permission to quit a book. Don't let a bad book stall your progress. We've all experienced reading a book that wasn't well written or had a boring story or just wasn't what you were in the mood for. You have the freedom to put aside any book and start reading something more interesting. If you must, give yourself a guideline such as reading the first 50 pages and then stopping if it's not enjoyable. What are you reading lately? Leave a comment below and let me know. That's it! This week, try these nine strategies to read more books in 2020. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And then come on over to sagegrayson.com and sign up for my free editor's toolkit. You'll get dozens of printable worksheets, ebooks, and resources to help you on your life editing journey, plus weekly updates and sage advice that I only share in email. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Music